Um, hello, everybody, and welcome back to TMR's Master Advisor Series. Today is January 21st, 2021, and we have a great guest and a great topic to get to, but just a couple of quick announcements first. Um, again, the chat is open, and as we go along today, I'm going to be doing my best to grab questions um, and also speaker view. If, uh, if you're in gallery view, speaker view might be the best viewing experience for you. If you want to toggle that, you can just click the button on the top right of the screen. Um, I also want to say that for everyone who was able to join us a couple weeks ago for the Kathy Sudeikis session, I really enjoyed that talk. And I want to point out that that whole session and the rest of our videos are all available on our YouTube page. I'm going to drop the link into the chat so you can subscribe if you want. Um, any subscription or any, uh, any interaction with the page really helps us reach other travel advisors on that platform. So if you like the content, please like and subscribe and comment and hopefully we'll be able to grow this community with everyone. Um, and I also, I know today we have a lot of new viewers, so I wanna say welcome. And I also wanna remind everyone that these sessions are done at the same time, 1 p.m. on Thursday, every two weeks. So please, please keep coming back. We've had close to 30,000 views on this series so far since we started. This is session number 22, so we're very proud of the community's growth, and we hope we can keep growing. So please come back, subscribe, like, uh, series, series having trouble hearing me, uh, like and subscribe, and uh, yeah, hopefully we can, we can keep this going. Um, I do want to announce our next session will be two weeks from today, 1 p.m., two weeks from today with Tom Carpenter, who is not only an agency lawyer, but agency owner, but he's also a lawyer. Um, he's gonna be talking to us about how you can create your own terms and conditions to use with your clients. We think that's super important, especially now. And uh, we hope you're able to join, join us for that. Uh, we'll have the sign up link ready to go and we'll drop it in the chat as soon as we're able to. And it'll also be in the thank you email when we wrap up today. So please keep an eye out. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you guys soon. Um, okay. So let's, let's get to today's guest. Um, today, I'm very happy to welcome Leslie v Vasilis from Indiana's Dahoney Travel. Uh, Leslie is the office manager at Dahoney and she's a longtime industry veteran. She first, she entered her first travel, travel agency as an employee when she was just 16 years old. She's here to talk about why consumers should use a travel agent in 2021 and how travel agents can communicate that value and their inherent value to their clients. So I wanna say welcome, Leslie. Thank you so much for lending us an hour of your time and I'm, I'm really excited for this talk. Thank you, Daniel. I'm excited to be on here and, and let's get going. Um, all right, well, I think let's, let's, let's first, I, I wanna sort of give you the opportunity to introduce yourself to everyone in, on the, in the call. Um, tell us a little bit about your experience in the travel agency. I mentioned when you got your start, but I mean, tell us a little bit about your career. Yeah, I actually started with Dahoney Travel, the one I'm with now. Um, when I was 16, it was a great opportunity. It, it just started off as kind of an errands girl. And then, you know, as summers opened during high school, got to answer phones and help with mailings. And when it came time to go to college, I, I went to a college here in town. So I still worked my 40 hours a week and went to school and um, got an accounting degree and then just loved the industry so much that I stayed with it. Um, my husband and I got married. We moved away. We were gone for about nine months and I missed it so much. I called the owner and said, please, do you have anything open? I'm ready to come back. Um, so I was here and um, have been here ever since. There was a short time around 9-11 that God placed me at another travel agency, but he, he brought me back as soon as Tahoney Travel was up and going full force again. And since then, I've been operating groups um, with, with the rest of my staff, and it's, it's just a ball. So being in over 25 years, a lot, a lot has changed, um, but it's, it's really fun, and it's, it's just something that I love to do. My heart's in it, and to share the world with friends is how we put it, and we love it. Yeah, I think that's, I mean, I think that's great. I think it's great to people for advisors to recognize their own personal stories too, because I think that's, that's what's going to help connect you uh, with clients and then sort of strengthen those, those connections, those conversations. So I think it's great. I think it's great. And I want to say thank you for sharing. Um, so I want to give you now the opportunity to give us sort of your elevator pitch to someone who asked whether or not they should book their upcoming uh, 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 vacation with the trial advisor. I know it could be a very lengthy conversation, but I want to give sort of you the opportunity to do a quick pitch to everyone. Um, if you were in that scenario, what would you what would you say? 
what kind of uh, what kind of things would you would you pass along to a consumer? Be happy to. Um, the the one thing I would mainly point out is you've got a live person. You've got someone that is there for you to do everything that you need them to do. Um, whereas if you book online or you do it yourself, you might not have a person to contact. And so um, with me, you'll have me 24 seven. We've got a, a live, an, an emergency line that we have. You call our office after hours, you can press three and it will take you to our emergency line, which I happen to carry. I've carried it for, gosh, we've had it maybe 15, 20 years. So if you're, if you're in Europe and you have a, a problem and you know it's nine o'clock here, 1 a.m. here, you need something, I'm here. I might be a little groggy, but I will wake up and I will get what you need and get it fixed. So a lot, I mean, a lot of consumers who maybe aren't aware of, of advisors would assume that um, booking with an advisor is going to cost them extra money. Um, I mean, what would your response be to that? Like they're nervous, they, they're already spending X amount of dollars on a vacation. Uh, I, they might say they don't want to spend extra money. They, they, they believe they can plan it themselves and save, and save a little extra cash. What would, what would you say to those people? We've always said our knowledge is the best value. Um, we do charge service fees. We are moving to um, charge them ahead of time and, and make them non-refundable because the moment we start talking to you, we are giving our knowledge, not only ours, but everyone else in our office. We have over, over 200 years, I think, when we added it all up, just because we've all been here so long, um, that if I don't know something, I can go to another person and I can have that answer for you. But you're paying for knowledge. You pay for a licensed contractor, an electrician, your heater. That's what we are. You call me, you don't have to worry about that. Um, I'll take care of it all. And, and hopefully I have special things that if you did it on your own, you wouldn't know about. So maybe I could give you those special you know, tours or just a little extra that, that you wouldn't have even thought about um, by coming through me. Yeah, I mean, we have, so we have some, a couple of questions or a couple of comments in the chat about service fees. And I do want to get to that um, a little later. Um, but I want to talk, I saw, I want to continue this sort of thread of show, showing what value you bring to your clients. And I want to bring up some statistics about 2020 in particular um, from the Bureau of Transportation Statistics. And I mean, I guess a lot of travelers' worst fears are getting stranded in an airport. Um, and missing a connection. And this 2020 alone, uh, six and a half percent of all flights in the US were canceled and 9% were delayed, which is actually 50% less than the usual year just because of the cancellations with COVID. Um, and I think, I, think show, I think people knowing how poorly trips can go when you don't have a uh, trained professional on your side is, uh, is, is a major selling point for travel advisors. And yeah, I mean, is that, is that something you, you found in your career? I mean, are there any it stories is. about sort of clients having their vacation saved by, by you, by, a, by an advisor at Dahoney that, that you can share with us to sort of demonstrate that value? And I, have, I have many. Um, I'll condense it down to several. Um, when, the, when the pandemic started, um, we had a little bit of a heads up to where any of our clients that were out of town, you know, they were across, across the ocean or even here, we started calling them up and saying, hey, they're gonna start shutting stuff down. When can we start getting you home? So we immediately got to where we were rebooking people um, because we didn't want them stuck there, but most of them weren't even aware of what was going on. So they were very thankful. Um, Let, Leslie, how did, did you guys anticipate when you saw news starting to break about COVID, you guys were you were you think you were ahead of the curve with realizing you know this might have big consequences for for our business? We knew it would, kind of like the SARS and the H one N one. We knew there would be some impact. Did not know that it would be this great yeah. an impact. I mean, it has hit everyone in this industry hard. Um, but we could kind of see it coming down the lines. We actually had staff people that were traveling. Um, we had two groups. We had one that was actually, we, we specialized in groups to Israel and we had a group over there. Some of them had went over, had just made it back. One of them was there um, and we had 10 people that were supposed to go over to Jordan. And we didn't know their group was coming back 
the next day. And so we started looking and we're like, we don't think if we get them over, if they go over to Jordan, we're never going to be able to get them back. And they're going to purchase tickets, um, expensive tickets on their own just to get back. So we worked through the group leaders, um, talked them through it, got them back for, um, I think there was like a $300 penalty that we had to charge at that time because we knew we were going to be losing some of the stuff in Jordan. Um, so we had told them, it looks like it's going to be a $300 penalty, but everything else will get back for you. Um, very good thing that we did because the morning they were supposed to leave, Israel and Jordan closed their borders. So oh, wow. we would not have been able to get them back. Um, so very thankful that we had kept them. Um, got all of them. There were two people who did their air on their own. And since they did their air on their own, I have no control over it. Um, they ended up having to spend about $3,000 because they chose to do it on their own because they could not get everything worked out. But those that did my, um, that went through us, we were able to change it with the airline for no fee. So it's, it's the relationships that we have with the airlines. It's the little bit heads up. You know, we have people on the ground in Israel that stay on top of things. Um, and really anywhere we send people, we have that. Um, thankfully we had that and then we just had this feeling that we just needed to get everyone home so very thankful that we did yeah that is that is a terrific I mean it's not a terrific story for clients but it is right. a story to show I mean yeah what can happen I mean just just having that sort of sample size and having people who book the air travel through through you mm -hmm. and or through their own kind of vastly different consequences um and I think that's when advisors sort of show their strength is is when when times are when times are tough or when times are chaotic yeah. Or even if you've got people traveling, we had this guy who was traveling. He's traveled with us for many, many years, um, had not purchased the insurance this time, which he kicks himself now and he has purchased it every time since. He was at the top of Masada, stepped on a creaky rock, ended up blowing out his knee. We had to get him off of the top of Masada. If you're not familiar with the Masada, it's either a little snake path that goes up um, the side of the, of the mountain and it's a very narrow path, or you have to go through this little walkway to get onto the cable car that takes you back down. Have you, have you been, Leslie, have you been to Masada? I have, I've actually been five times and it is the most amazing place. <laughs> um, for those who don't know what Masada is, it was um, Caesar's Palace, um, one of his many palaces that was in the area. So it's, it's phenomenal. And when they came to invade it, to make it theirs, um, they built a ramp to, to throw in the, the fire and bombs, not bombs, but, you know, the art artillery then. Yeah. That path is still there, but it took forever to do that. But um, after he had blown that out, we oh went to the hospital. He was two hours away from Jerusalem about 30 minutes from another hospital. And they said, well, we can take him to this one. And we're like, no, you gotta take him to the good one. He needs to go to Jerusalem. So he went to Jerusalem. They fixed him up enough to where he could fly back, but he had to stay in the hospital for about a week until they got it. So we, we arranged for his wife to have, you know, a hospital or a room that was close to the hospital and a, an interpreter for them while they were there and just was able to take care of them because we have those relationships. But that's another way, you know, if you get stuck, you get hurt. Yeah. Was this a long time uh, client of, 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 of the agency? It was. It was. And actually, I had traveled with him maybe a year before with one of their groups to D.C. Um, and so he was so excited. And then when that happened, he was like, oh, my goodness, why didn't I do this? <laughs> Yeah, that is, I mean, I cannot imagine if I was seriously injured in a place like that, not having someone to call. Like, I wouldn't, Yeah. it would be, I'd be Googling the emergency com emergency numbers of whatever country I was in because it wouldn't be the same as it is here in the U.S. either. Right. And thankfully, Israel is up there. They're not as as technical as we are. They're up there. But yeah, it, knowing where to go was a big help for them you know, and, and our, our guide that was with them, we have used for so long. He was like, this is what we need to do. He kept us informed. We kept them informed, kept family here informed. So it, it really helps to, 
in that aspect of just having an advisor that's on your side that can help you if need be. Yeah, and again, especially, I mean, with the rise of sort of remote travel and adventure travel, which which seems a key gaining interest as, as the years go by. I mean, it's going to be right. people to people to have trusted advisors to make sure, you know, it's not it's, it's not something something small going wrong on those kind of trips is very different than something small going wrong on yeah. the typical, yeah, domestic. It's a, yeah, it's that pay for what you get, you know, you may pay a little bit, but you're going to get that service. If it's needed, you're going to get the service, not if, if there is no emergency or if there is no problem, but you're going to get above and beyond and have access for that money. And that's what that's what I've had to work with my my agents here is how to be comfortable to to do something, you know, to charge a fee and and show your worth because your knowledge is worth so, so much. Um, and people just have to remember that. Yeah, let, let me let's talk about that because a couple of people were asking about fees, and it seems to be a common question every time we have one of these sessions, uh, mm -hmm. which I don't mind. But <laughs> uh, it is it, it does seem to be catching on more and more for advisors, especially older school advisors who maybe never considered charging fees. Like now might be the time to start implementing them, just because of the value you bring, and because advisors, you know also need to be paid for, for their hard work and, and dedication to their clients. So, I mean, yeah, I want to ask you about, I mean, you mentioned it earlier in the call. Um, what, what is sort of the, the agency's philosophy towards fees right now? We had, we've always charged, I guess for the past 10, 15 years, we charged the service fees for, okay, if you do a ticket, it's 35 domestic, 75 international. Um, and just as, as an extra because all the commissions have gone. Most of the time when you have a package or a cruise, you'll get some commission from them. Um, but we've decided this year that, that we our knowledge is worth something from the start. The moment I start looking at this, I do all this research for you and I don't charge you a thing. And then you take my knowledge and you go and you book it yourself. What's to guarantee that they're not gonna go book it themselves? The only way that you're going to know that your client is willing to work with you is to, to have some sort of a contract and, and to charge that non-refundable fee. We've even, we've, we've tried where we've charged the fee and then we put it towards the booking. We're kind of trying to figure our way out, but it, it's looking like we're going to do the 250 fee, um, non-refundable up front, but that says you're willing to work with me. My knowledge is valuable to you. Mm -hmm have a nice relationship we're going to become you know let's become friends work together because I need to know what you like so that I can book you the best thing um, and so that you will have that unforgettable vacation and and have all these things to do so it that's the one thing people have to just remember is your knowledge is worth so much more it's it's going to a lawyer you pay 100 200 dollars an hour you have a heating service come out just to check your stuff. It's $100 an hour, $99 to come and clean your drain. And they, you know, they just add fees after that. But you, it's just something you pay for. And it's, it's value. It's value is what it is. Yeah, I do. So I just, I just want to mention, we, have, we do have a lot of proponents of fees in the chat. And if anyone isn't familiar, we, I, I did speak to two sort of fee experts um, last year, and those are those are on our YouTube page. If you want to catch up on those videos, um, but I do want to ask you, Leslie. I mean, what is what was it? A, is is sort of the fee discussion not even externally but internally within an agency? Was that ever a difficult one to have? What did did you did, was there ever sort of questions or pushback from from employees at Tahoni, um, or or from people outside your agency who you know in the industry who? who who sort of are anti fees, and I guess what 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 would their what would the devil's advocate be for that, and how would you answer it? There, I wouldn't necessarily say it was pushback from our employees, but we do have those. We're like, okay, so if you've worked with them forever, you know they're going to travel with us. They, we have that relationship. Sure, don't charge the fee because we know. Um, but the other thing is, is to convince them. I was, I was telling them. Sometimes those that you don't charge, they're going to be the ones that give you the hardest time and you have to put in so much work. And if you cannot, how much you make, 
with those, if you don't charge this $250 fee, you're only making five cents an hour because you put in all this work and there's, there's little pay. So, you know, you're worth more than five cents an hour, don't you think? Um, and, and that has seemed to, to really help. Now it's just getting through, it's devastating when you take that call because we're rotating people in and out of our office right now, you know, working from home or they're here in the office. We've, we've had to cut hours. So there's two of us that work every day. So we get a lot of the calls. I'm one of them that gets the retail calls. And I'll start off with, you know, we, we do want to get to know you. You know, let's talk a little bit. We're going to, we have a $250 service fee. Um, and there's people who are downright mean. I had, <laughs> I had one person that was recommended actually by two or three friends on Facebook. And she called and I said, you know, I, we have a service fee. I told her everything she gets, the big is the 24 seven, you get a live person. And she went and blasted me on Facebook. And here's all my friends. And they kept on saying, well, why don't you call her? Well, no, she's the one that charged the fees. And it, it was very hard to see, but it made me realize that's probably not the kind of client I want. I want someone that will work with me. They tell me what they want and they value my opinion and, and they're ready to go and do it. So it's just reminding yourself and having good self-worth. Um, you're, you're worth it. You're worth that $250 fee. You're worth more. Um, but it's, it is, it is a big change. We're still all having to work through it here. Yeah. I mean, that, that is a tough conversation. I mean, to have both, you know, with people who saw those comments and both internally with yourself too. But I think, again, it comes back to realizing your value to, and realizing your worth in your business. Um, we have a couple questions about fees and I think we're, I'm going to run through them and then we'll, we'll sort of jump to something else. Okay. Um, So Bar, uh, Donna wants to know when exactly, I mean, again, we're, we're, this isn't a specific, particularly a fee session, but I think we'll, we'll answer these. When, when, when do you mention that fee to your client? Do you do when they first request information? I, I talk to them and I say, hey, let's get together. Let's meet. Let's find out kind of what you want. Um, and then I talk with them about the fee and I, we, we have went back and forth and did several different things and kind of like an agreement that we have um, with the client to where they sign it. it. It just has, you can go out and Google it. I don't have one that I can share with everyone, but you can go Google it and, and put it towards your own company because we are all different in one way or the other, even though we're kind of the same. Um, but I just mention it and say, hey, we've got this fee. If you're ready for, to proceed, read through this. Here's the fees that we have. It's upfront. They sign, they pay the fee, and we move on. If they don't want to do it um, or even do a get to know you type call, it's not worth it. And I, I go ahead and mention it then. And, and most of the time that will wrap up the call and, and get them moving on. Yeah, and uh, again, I'm, I'm, gonna have, I'm gonna do one more fee question, but we do, if you wanna watch a full, uh, we have two almost full hours about fees on our uh, YouTube page and on our, on our training tab uh, with uh, two advisors, Jamie Jones and Tiffany Hines, which we talk about um, fee models like like yours, Leslie, and we talk and they talk about sort of the different ways they do it. Yeah. And, uh, having those conversations, which I think is a, a big point with clients. Um, so Actually, here, that conversation is where we got ours. I yeah. went into it and watched them and were like, okay, let's go. <laughs> that is great. I'm going to, I mean, if any of the great series. Part, if there's a yeah. Met team member on the call, if you guys want to drop the link in the chat, hopefully people are able to jump it up. Uh, but Peter asks, uh, he says, there's a divide amongst customers. He says, I usually use 45-year-old customers, olders, respect your fees, but the younger clients, uh, 45 or in their 30s, they're being told no fees by OTAs and some are owned by the very vendors we use every day. Can you offer co any comments on this? So I guess the question is, um, again, back to those conversations. If, if someone says they can book something online for free, and, but why, and they're wondering why they should book with you and when they're getting charged extra, I mean, would, would you have an answer for that? 
I, I go back to my elevator pitch. You got me 24 seven. If you're traveling, have a problem, I'm here. Book it on your own. You're probably not gonna be able to reach someone in the middle of the night. You're gonna get a, um, a message that says we're closed and, and you're just not gonna have that support. So, and I, I have no hesitation telling people if you're not willing for that fee, please feel free, go right ahead. I've had some people come back and say, oh, it was harder than I thought. It's not just a click, click, click. Um, or it's a harder trip and we want you to, to do this for us. So that's, that's the big thing. But you also have to know that if you say no and you get rejected, it's okay because you probably did not want them anyways. Yeah, I exactly. I mean, for all the advisors who, uh, or even not for all the consumers who, who have booked consistently through an OTA, I don't know anyone who hasn't had an issue. I mean, I, I, I remember booking a hotel for my, for my sister's graduation and having an issue and like mm -hmm. the town is full because it's a small college town, you know? So, right. Exactly. And I do want to read an excerpt um, from an article about from Forbes from January 2020 titled Why You Need a Travel Agent More Now Than Ever, just because it, it sort of demonstrates what we're talking about now, this OTA versus this advisor scenario. Um, so the article says, want to rent a villa in Tuscany and do it on your own? It's simple. Just type Villa Rentals Tuscany to Google, then wade through the four and a half million responses, most of those which look the same, whether they are good or bad, legit or bogus. Spend 10 seconds of editing each, each site and it'll be done in a year and a half. Um, which I, again, yeah, Leslie, I don't, you're nodding your head. I don't know. <laughs> on that, but that, that just shows how, how poorly things can go wrong, especially for these particular type of vacations. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. And I've, I mean, I've had people who I've barely known and they find out I'm a travel agent. And actually one of our, our really good friends has happened. She had booked a, a Disney vacation through someone else. And I was like, oh, you're going to have so much fun in Disney since you haven't been. And she goes, you know, I can't get a hold of my advisor, my travel agent. And I'm like, you can't get a hold of your travel agent. She said, yeah, our, our final payment's due and I can't get a hold of her. I'm like, um, call and ask for her manager. <laughs> and there were so many things that she was like, I'm glad I met you because you're willing to work me through this. Because once you have one, it was too close to where we couldn't get it switched over to me and this and that. But um, now they come to me for their travel because they had that other problem. But it's, you just have to have an agent that knows what they're doing. And that's with us, you know, over 200 years of experience, that's amazing. Me, myself, I've got, you know, over 25, so it helps. <laughs> I mean, the, the conversation seems seems to have gone away, but I mean, do you remember having the conversations with people about sort of the struggles between booking with an advisor versus booking with an OTA? And I, I, I mean, I, I don't know if I was exactly in the industry when sort of the bloom of the OTAs happened, but I mean, do you remember, do you remember what, what, what the worries were? And uh, it's, I'm sure it seems like a long time ago, but I mean, about, about sort of losing business to the OTAs. Yeah. Everyone was so worried, you know, we're not, they're going to go to this because they're so much cheaper. And then, you know, you realize, wait, I have value. My clients want to work with me. They're sending me thank you notes for, for all of my help. And those that go to the OTA, once again, you probably didn't want them. Yeah. It, and it turned out, you know, our bookings actually went up because they had troubles in the process. You know, I tried doing this myself, but I couldn't get a book, so I thought I'd call you. So it, it was a long time ago, but it's an ongoing fight, but you also have to give yourself worth and I'm worth it, they'll come to me. Yeah, and I, I do, I want to, uh... I want to uh, move to sort of how we, how you can, what sort of Dahoney does to communicate that value again. But I want to, so we have about 20, 20 minutes left. Um, I see sort of the chat rolling along. Please, if there's any other questions, I'm going to do my best to sort of catch them as they go along. Um, and and, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll keep going. Um, so I want to, I, I took a sort of a look around Dahoney's, uh, uh, website, uh, Leslie, and mm -hmm. you have sort of a couple of powerful tools that I think advisors should know about, especially the ones who are building their own websites or maybe editing theirs and looking to sort of improve on that. Maybe if that's one of their New Year's resolutions. 
Um, you have a testimonial page and I'm wondering sort of, I mean, what value do you see in that and what role do you think that plays with your clients? I think it plays a big role because they, once they're clients, they, if they're looking to see it, it shows we know what we're doing. Um, our test, and then with our clients, it's good to hit, get that feedback from them. Um, and we, we do get so much feedback that we've, we've just asked them, Hey, you know, give us a shout and we'll put you on there. And it just shows that, you know, we're willing to work with people. We, with the, with COVID, when it all started, there were some grants that came out and they had a, a Southern Indiana grant for small business um, owners. And we applied for it and it was from me, uh, from digital marketing. So what we have done is we've updated our, our website. A lot of it had been updated before, but we took that money and we, we did videos and we did Zoom calls so people could see, oh, that's how they're, you know, they can operate now. Um, we can talk one-on-one -on -one without being face-to-face -face because we're face-to-face -face with Zoom. Um, it, it was nice with it moving more into the digital, digital area. Um, and then the testimonies, you know, when someone comes back, that's, that's big. You know, like so much, they want to give us a compliment instead of, you know, this and this and, you know, grumpy travelers and this went wrong and that went wrong. But nine and a half times out of 10, we get, we get the good feedback with the testimonials. Yeah, and I don't, I don't think if you go on the consumer reports or the, or the, any, any kind of sort of a business bureau agency and look at, look at the reports for Expedia and Travelocity, I don't think you're getting nine out of 10 good reviews. Right, right. You're, you're more than likely going to get a eight or seven out of 10. Yeah. Or call me back and yeah, granted, some days we do have busy days where we don't get back, but we always like to try and reach people back within at least 24 hours if not the same day. Um, it's customer service. It's a big customer service driven industry. And that's, that just shows more of your value and that you care. Yeah, and then we have Peter again commenting, saying ask Costco about their travel experiences for the last year. <laughs> um, that was a big, a big contention point with travel advisors too. Right. <laughs> well, and you also have the fallout that Costco had with some of their travel too. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, again, 2020, I think we all want to put it in the rear view mirror, uh, and fair enough, but it did, it, it did provide an opportunity for advisors to sort of shine and, and, and mm -hmm. skills that maybe they, they didn't have, they didn't necessarily have to use before 2020. Right, right. It made us all stop and think and appreciate and, and move forward with what we have. And, you know, again, it comes back to that value of knowledge and we're there. Um, so I do also want to ask you, because we touched on this during our, uh, our sort of uh, introduction call this week, is, is about social media and how, how social media uh, impacts, impacts your agency and, and what role do you think it has as, as for yours? I mean, do you use it as sort of a communication tool with clients, as a marketing tool with prospective clients, or sort of uh, as, as none of the above? We actually use it for all of the above. We okay. We have it out there. We've, um, when all of this started, we started the Armchair Traveler because we knew people wanted to still see things in the world, but yet we couldn't leave our armchair. We had to stay in. We were, we were stuck in our houses. So we did all the, we did a big campaign um, with Armchair and showed various different places and sites, did the, I think we did some point of view videos, just things just to keep our clients updated and us in front of them. So when it did open up, we could start doing it. Once a few things opened up in Indiana and Kentucky, we did a Kentuckiana staycation mm -hmm. um, with ideas of what they could do around, around here, you know, just a 15, 20 minute, three hour drive. You can go and see this. You don't, you know, it's not busy and it's, it's a safe because it's an outdoor, outdoor, outdoor activity. Um, so it's just one of those fun little things. But yeah, we, we have our friends. In fact, with that, we tripled our numbers. Oh my God. The end of 2019 through 2020, we tripled our numbers. 
Um, it was amazing. You, you tripled your numbers. Is, was it specifically for the, the staycations or local travel or was it, was it overall? It was overall. It was overall, even just, you know, cause everyone turned to YouTube, it seemed like, what can we, what can we do? I want to live through someone else. You know, what were they doing before this? And, um, and kind of the social media was like that too. You know, it'll pop up. We did pay for some ads to, to pop up on people's feeds, you know, trying to get new, new eight or new clients. Um, but our old ones were all like, oh my goodness, thank you so much. This keeps me interested in travel and I'm so excited. And when can we go? And so, yeah, it has been a very big, th big thing for us. Oh, that, yeah, that is extraordinary that, that you were able to have that kind of success as the world was shut down too. I mean, mm -hmm. what kind of things were you posting on social that, that you think dr drove that kind of growth? Was it, you, you mentioned the videos, was, it was a lot of videos. Um, it wasn't all videos. A lot of them were just little, you know, here's Italy, here's, you know, this side, here's that side. It was just all over the world um, that we would just find a place and our marketing director would just go out there and make it shine. And it, it was really amazing. It just kept everyone interested. It was just one picture here, you know, just about every day. I think she had something new. We tried at least two, three times a week, but I think she made it almost every day. Man, yeah, and I think that, I mean, that says something about, I, I know people might be sick of hearing the, the term pent up travel demand because we've been talking about it for months, but I, it's very much, right. it's very much there. I think that proves that. Yeah, and I think once we open up, oh my goodness, we're going to be wishing we had some downtime, but thankful that we, we no longer have it. I mean, it's, it's going to be so exciting when we can get out there. If I have to have a vaccine to go travel, give it to me. I'm ready to go. Yeah. I think there's a lot of people who are ready, you know, just tell me what I have to do. I'm ready to go. Yeah. And I, and I, I completely agree with you. And I am right there uh, with you. Um, so we have about a little 10 minutes or so. I, I do see a lot of questions coming in. I'm, I'm, I apologize if I haven't. Uh, While you're looking through that, it, another point came to mind. Travel agents keep on top of the travel rules, which are changing daily and sometimes hourly. Um, the restrictions of leaving the country, coming back to the U.S., even though you're a U.S. citizen, you have to have this test or, you know, it, that's another good reason to use a travel agent or a travel advisor because they stay on top of that. Yeah, and I know a lot of resorts now are offering sort of on-site testing and, and some destinations mm -hmm. are good. I mean, uh, you're also, if, if, if you're not staying at one of those, you're not lucky enough to be, you know, you're going to have trouble understanding the rules and it's not it's not it's not always obvious I guess is my point right and the other thing is is if the agent knows that that's available why not stay at this resort instead of another one because you know you can make it back home because they're going to have the test for you to do so I think as it comes along more everyone it will be available to everyone more especially to the big places where people travel but that's just something that that's another value that people people need to remember. Um, so we have a question from Barbara McPherson. Uh, she just wants to know if you guys, we, we spoke about social media, but I guess if, if you guys, do you do a newsletter to your clients? Um, we have in the past. Um, haven't really, since we've been doing it more so on social media, we do it on Facebook and Instagram. I'm not, I don't think that we've done much Twitter, but um, we keep those two. We do have a YouTube page that has all of our videos. We did, um, with our digital grant, we did several staff photos and videos and segments. And um, we did a three-part segment with six of us of why to use a travel agent, the value, the travel protection, the 24-7 customer service, supplier and vendor. Um, so all of that's on our web are on our website too. So it's, we've, we're just keeping our mind, you know, keeping out in front of who we have. Um, at some point when we have people traveling, we want to maybe do a blog here and there, just kind of taking it as is and, and going with the flow and see how, how and what works best. Yeah, exactly. I think again, it, yeah, you like, we, we spoke about fees earlier in the conversation. It's not going to be a one size fit all for any right. of scenarios like you're gonna have to figure out what works best for your agency and your clients and uh, mm -hmm. trial and error seems to be a good way to figure that out yeah because we have group travel that is totally different from our individual retail travel 
So the individual retail has the, um, the fees, whereas our group travel doesn't because it's a large group going and it's just, you know, we have one person that we work with, the host. So it's, it's just a different, so it, it is, it's finding what is best for your agency. Um, so you mentioned group travel, and again, I didn't want to ask you another question about fees, but I'm going to do it. Uh, everyone's <laughs> wondering about, about fees for, for group travel. I mean, I don't know if you want to get specific, but I mean, how different are the fees, are your agency fees for group travel as compared to uh, other types of travel? With our group travel, there are no fees. We've, um, we're more of a, for Israel and Greece and Jordan and, and several other, other destinations, those are just our main little niches. Um, we, we're more of a travel supplier in that aspect. So we just bundle it as one price. You've got the air, land, meals, all of that is just in one price. Okay. And we've got our brochure that lists what's included, what's not included. So there's no fees per se on the group travel, unless someone wants to do an air upgrade or something. And, you know, depending on that, we may have to add a little bit of a fee but for the most part with our group travel, we don't add anything additional. Okay. Um, so I'm, I want to give you, I'm going to give you a couple minutes to wrap up, Leslie, but mm -hmm. I want to, I see a lot of great comments about sort of people's own opinions about why people should use travel advisors. Um, and if you have, if you have any good points you use when you do your own elevator pitches to everyone in the chat, please, please drop your, drop your pitch in the chat. And uh, we'd love to feature you on TMR. You can shoot me an email. I'm at dmccarthy at travelmarketreport.com. Um, but I would love to get all these reasons together to sort of to sort of in one place, so you'll be able to show uh, show yourself and show your clients just 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 how much value you can bring to them. But uh, but yeah, Leslie. I mean, do you have anything else to add? Anything else you think we we sort of ran over today, or or, or any final words to wrap up this conversation that you want to share? Just want to stress to each and every person, your value and your worth is worth it. Charge, charge the fees. You're, that's what you have done. You have worked your whole life to do this and you know, you know it. So share it and, and don't be afraid to, to charge for it either. Because everyone out there is, if you're a good agent, you're around, stick with it. It's fun. <laughs> Yeah, and it's great to see so many great voices like yours uh, in the industry and, 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 and not only surviving, but doing so well in the midst of sort of a, of a, of a global pandemic. <laughs> right. It's, it's great. Um, so yeah, and I just want to remind everyone again, I saw a couple of questions about terms and conditions. Please, please, please come back in two weeks. We're going to be back here with, with Tom Carpenter. We're going to be building, we're going to be showing you how to build your own terms and conditions sheet. Um, and I think that's going to be super valuable uh, as people sort of begin to travel again. But I want to say thank you again, Leslie. Uh, I truly enjoyed our conversation today. And uh, I hope to speak with you again. And everyone else, I hope to very much see you uh, in, the, in the near term future. So uh, everyone have a great rest of your week. And uh, I'll see you soon. Thank you. See you soon.